Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take another look at what we mean by equivalent couple. So here again, we have two vectors. They're equal in magnitude, pointing in opposite directions. We have F1 and negative F1. The negative simply means it's the opposite direction. Their distance D1 apart from one another. So therefore, the couple that is formed by that, or the magnitude of the couple, so the magnitude of the couple, uh, let's call it M sub 1, and we'll call the magnitude is simply the distance between them times the magnitude of each of the two vectors. The magnitudes are the same, of course. Now, what happens if we move along the line of action of each of these two forces to some different location? So notice that F1 is acting at some point A, and negative F1 is acting at some point B. So let's now go from point A to point C, and let's go from point B to point D. Notice that we moved the same amount of distance in each case along the line of action of the two forces. Now let's draw a dashed line between these two, like this. And now let's redraw the two forces. I'll use a different color. I'm looking for a good color. Let's try this color right here. And let's draw F1 again. Now, to kind of keep things uh, a little bit easier to deal with, let's call it F2. So F2. Now, F1 and F2 are exactly the same. They both act along the same line of action. They're both the same length, therefore the same magnitude, so they're actually the same force. So let's call this F sub 2. Let's call this force negative F sub 2. So negative F sub 2. Notice both of those forces are exactly the same as F1 and negative F1. Now, what if I draw the components that are perpendicular to the line connecting these two and parallel to the line connecting these two? So I'm going to draw the two components. So this would be here, the component of F2 along this line, like this, and so this has to be perpendicular. So this would be uh, F2 that would be parallel, and then I draw the component which is perpendicular. So this here would be F2 perpendicular to the line connecting F2 and negative F2. I do the same over here. So this here would be the component. That would be a negative F2 that would be perpendicular to the line connecting the two. And here would be the component that would be a negative F2 parallel. All right. Now notice that the components that are parallel to the line connecting the two will not form a torque, will not form a moment. It will not cause, if this was an object and these points were attached to that object, it would not cause that object to turn around. However, the components that are perpendicular would cause a rotational motion, so these two components do form a moment. Now also notice that the distance between those two has now is now larger. So this is the distance D2, and it turns out that the amount by which D1 grew to D2 is compensated for by the fact that the magnitude of the perpendicular components are now smaller in such a way, and this is the key here, that if we multiply F1 times D1, that is going to be equal to the perpendicular component, F2 perpendicular, and D2. And therefore, we can say that these are equivalent couples causing the exact same moment because the product of the forces times the distance between them is exactly the same. And so again, you can see that F1, the magnitude of F1 times D1, forming a, forming a moment, is exactly the same as the component of the force perpendicular to the line connecting the two as I move them to a new location times the new distance between them, D2, that product will be exactly the same, and therefore they're called equivalent coupled. Kind of interesting, we can just continue that in perpetuity, and the farther out we go, the smaller the perpendicular component will get, the bigger the distance between them will get in such a way that the, that the product of the perpendicular component and the distance between the two will always be equal to the original F1, D1, and therefore they're called equivalent couples. Which means that the moment doesn't change when we move the forces to a new location, of course we have to move the force and the negative of the force, the same amount of distance along the line of action that will not change the moment, and so therefore they're called equivalent couples. And that's how it's done. Welcome to Electron Line. In this video we're going to take another look at what we mean by equivalent moments. 
Oh, no, equivalent couples.